In this video, I'm going to talk about the box model and box widths as concepts. And in a future video, the next one actually, I'm going to talk about how you implement parts of your bo the box model into your coding, as well as implementing widths. Now, the box model is perhaps the most important concept to understand when designing the layouts of your pages. It is also one of the more complicated ones. Uh, so it will take some time to fully grasp what is happening. Uh, the reason why it is so important is that everything on your website, it consists of boxes. Every time you make an H1, every time you make an H2, or a paragraph, or an H3, or a section, or a header, or an image, you are creating boxes. And I'm going to use this uh, web developer toolbar for the first time to show you um, how the boxes will look or how just to, it visualizes these boxes. I can outline them. It's one of the features of that. So you can see that the H1 is actually a rectangle uh, with my name in it. The H2 is a rectangle or a box, what we call a box, with portfolio from the chocolate series. The paragraph is a box. The H3 is a box. Even though there's no outline around the image, it is a box as well. And we need to learn how to understand how the boxes work, the co components of the boxes, and how to control them and manipulate them to do what we want them to do. So boxes consist of multiple parts. And that's what the box model is, is understanding uh, those parts. So let's say we have a box with some content in it. And I'm using this lorem ipsum Latin text, which is the default kind of text that web designers use uh, when filling in content that, that they just want to be place filler and not to pay attention to. Uh, this is the content area right over here. <coughs> Excuse me. Every box has a content area, and the content consists of your writing, your images, your videos, and so on. And that is the center of the box, um, is your content area. It's, it's on, in every single box, and it's where your writing, images, and videos uh, live on your page. Okay. Um, the next part of the box is the padding. The padding is the space just around the content area. And it's defined as the space between the content and the border. And I'll show you what that means in a minute. But you can see that around the content area in this gray area is the padding. And padding is named padding top, padding bottom, padding right, padding left. That's the nomenclature uh, for the box model. You can have something top, right, bottom, um, and left. Now, when you're thinking about padding in the box, I would like you to think about a real box, OK? And a packaging box, for example, uh, that has some padding inside of it and inside of that padding, you put your contents, like Little Baby Yoda, for example, if you're sending Little Baby Yoda to, as a gift to somebody. Here, the contents of the box are this text, but it could also be anything else, a picture, and so on. So the padding is what exists just inside, uh, just outside of the content, keeps it safe, gives it a little bit of room, Let's it breathe a little bit. And we can think about the border, actually. We can think about the border as the, the box itself, the packaging box. And right here, this outside would be our border. And the border has a top, it has a left, the border has a right and the border has a bottom. 
and each one of these can be controlled separately. You can have give widths to your border, five pixels, two pixels, no pixels, and so on. They can be lines or dashes or dots, or they can be customized. Don't recommend that. Lines are the best. Dashed, not so much. Okay. So each one of these each box has a top border that goes around the top, the bottom, and the left. And outside of the, the padding, outside of the padding is what we call the margin. And the margin is defined as the space between boxes. And this margin is in this area here, it's in this white area here, and so far, and it's in this area down here, and this area down here on the side. And again, we would call this margin top. I didn't want to type it in there because it would become overwhelming with text. Margin top, margin right, margin bottom, margin left. And I want you to think about the way that boxes, when they're stacked on top of each other, that there are margins between these different boxes. So there's a margin here, there's a margin here, and so on. Even though they're right up to each other, there's a margin in this area over here. And just like you can stack boxes on top of one another, you can also just erase these little marks. You can also have multiple boxes next to each other. So here is a box that is next to each other. This box is on the right, this box is on the left. Um, this box over here, for example, has a photo of a, of, of, a, uh, of a barn inside of it as its content. And um, you can also have a box that goes down on the bottom, for example, and you can see so on and so forth. And so you can see that this space between these boxes, right here, this space between these boxes is our margin between these areas here. And we can see we have a content area, we have a padding, we have a border, and we have a margin. Content area, padding, border, margin. Um, and that is the way that our boxes are set up. Everything on your page, every element that you create, whether it be an H1 or an H2 or a paragraph or a section or a figure, can have a content area, will have a content area, can have padding applied to it, can have borders applied to it, can have margins apply to it. And typically, we do just about all those to each of our elements on the page, as will become uh, a little bit clearer. Now, just as you can provide padding and margins and, con and borders uh, and margins to your boxes, you can also apply widths. Uh, it's very important to be able to apply widths to our page. And this is incredibly important uh, because we want to be able to control the size uh, of the boxes that we are making. We're going to be doing this in percentages, uh, but I want to show you how we understand widths uh, and how they are. And so it's important to understand how widths are applied when sizing your boxes. The width of a box as we are going to be conceiving it. And there are several different ways. Thankfully, in this, the new versions of CSS, boxes are so much easier than they used to be. Oh my goodness. You used to have to do all these hacks to make sure they worked on different browsers. Now it's just very straightforward. Um, but the width of a box is deter goes from the way we're doing a border box, from the left border to the right border is how I would like you to envision 
the size of the box that you are going to be creating when you create one. And so the overall width of the box that you make will be the amount of the left border, the amount of the left padding, the content size, the amount of the right padding, and the amount of the right border. Now, these are usually done by our, um, our borders are usually done in pixels, okay? Our borders, our paddings, oops, our borders and our paddings are usually done in pixels, whereas our content area, whereas the overall width, pixel, 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 the overall width is we're going to see is done with percentages. And this is a little bit confusing until we actually implement it onto the page. Uh, but you can give your left border uh, 5 pixels. You can give your left padding 10 pixels, your right padding 10 pixels, and your right border uh, 5 pixels. You know, you can control that. Uh, but you give your overall width in percentages. Okay. So the width of a page might be, your width of a box might be 80%. And it's important to understand these concepts and how this all works because when you begin to see it uh, on a website, for example, we need to understand how we conceive of percentages of the boxes. Okay? The browser screen is always 100%. That's always the 100% size, regardless of the size of the screen. So, for example, even if oops, if the screen is say is this size, it's still 100%. If it's this size, it's still 100%. Okay. Regardless of the size of the browser screen, it is always 100%, and everything then is relative uh, to that screen size, and then is relative to the boxes that they sit inside of. And so the primary rule that I want you to remember, widths are always a percentage of the box they sit inside of. And I want you to think about Russian nesting dolls, okay? Or things sit inside, the little dolls, they sit inside one another, one another, one another, okay? Um, and the size of the one that's on the inside is determined by the size of this one that's sitting inside of, okay? So here, if we're looking at this screen, which we know is 100%, we will see that the width of this area here, where the where the portfolio and everything sort of comes up against, looks to be about right about here. And indeed, this width in the code is coded at eighty percent. So it's given a, this sort of line of code width. 80%. Right? To get this. And that is 80% of the screen, which is 100%. So this is why, and then you can give it an eyeball it and say, okay, yeah, that, that's 80% of the screen right there. Now let's take a look at this Bill Wolf, which is my H1. If we recall, the width of that is approximately right about here. 
of that element. I don't have a background color in there, so you can't really see it. But the width of that element is coded at 50%. Now that 50% is 50% of the 80%, because you'll see that this box right here is inside of this box right there. And widths are always a percentage of the box they sit inside of. So if I am going to determine or think about a width for this H1 element, I need to think about it as 50% of the 80% box. That doesn't mean that it is 50% of the browser. It means it is 50% of this element here that I had already coded, which was the body. So if I then created another box, let's say inside of the here, which is very small, not a very good one, um, and I wanted to make that 10%, it would be 10% of the of the 50% box. Okay, 10% of that size of that box. So the boxes are nested within one another, and we always need to know that when we are coding it, that when we are giving a width to a box, it is always a percentage of the box it is inside of. And so if I'm thinking 50% for my H1, I need to know that I'm thinking 50% of this 80% box. And when I'm coding my body, which I did, I know that the body is 80% of this of the browser, because the browser is the main box. And indeed, if you go back to look at we will go back and look at the code, you'll see that I have coded the body with a width of 80%. And I have coded my H1 with a width of 50%, and so on and so forth. Uh, my paragraph, I have given it a width of 80%. So let's go take a look at it. And you can see that the paragraph, and I have made that 80%. And so that 80% is 80% of the body. Not 80% of the screen or the browser screen, the browser window. It is 80% of the body that I've coded 80% already. So this is how things can get a little confusing, okay? And we want to make sure that we're keeping track of our widths and how we're doing things. And one of the ways that we're going to do that is we're going to be doing some sketching. We're going to sketch out the layout of our pages the way we want them, and we're going to write down what widths we want to have there. So we want to write down, we'll write down it's 80% and 50% and 80% or 45% or whatever percent it is, so that it's easier for us to keep track of what it is that we are actually doing uh, when we are coding uh, these things. So. Uh, in the next video, I will talk about implementing and coding these widths and the margins and the, the paddings and so on. And as you have questions, please, of course, uh, let me know.